Well, hello everybody and welcome to the probably last uh, Psycho Platter episode for the year, episode 44. That's right, we're already up to 44 episodes already. Um, the reason why it probably is going to be my last episode is, well, you know, Christmas holiday coming up, okay. Um, I don't want to say, well, okay, I'm almost broke. Not because of, of this, but auto repairs kind of did me in uh, this past week. And, you know, and that mixed with I haven't found anything much here um, sponsored, I wish, by Krispy Kreme. So this, I, I do have one last batch here that I'm going to talk about really quick. And, and then I'm going to bring up a couple other things, too, some shout-outs, some new shout-outs, too. So... Um, let's get on with this. Um, I ended up finding a bunch. I went to a Goodwill, um, maybe about a couple weeks back, and found this stash, which was really, really cool. So, let's see, right off the bat here, we've got, you know, I, I didn't have a decent copy of this album. I had it on cassette, I've had it on CD, but I now finally have GTR, that's right, from 1986. Uh, we're talking here, you know, um, huh, musical jeopardy question. Okay, or the, or the, excuse me, the answer would be GTR. The musical question is from what band? Uh, what from a member of Yes and a member of Genesis and other members? Did GTR come from? And yes, that's right. Yes, Steve Howe from Yes. Uh, this was. Uh, this was kind of act after Asia, okay? He he left uh, Asia. <sighs> big big politics on that one. Um, he actually hung around till past the Alpha album. Um, there was him and John Wetton didn't get along. I'm told back then for whatever reason, and that's when Greg Lake stepped in. So you had two thirds of Emerson Lake and Palmer. I really wish, I don't know if it's on DVD, maybe somebody out there can help me and clarify, um, but on MTV in 83, late 83, I want to say, they had Asia in Asia. That was the name of the concert special, and I think that was the only time that that lineup stuck around. I want to say early 84... They were working on a new album um, with that lineup, I'm told, but they didn't get very far. And Wetton came back, Hal left, and that's how you ended up with Mandy Meyer from Crocus uh, coming in to do Asia's Astro, which that album, mm, it should have been released as an EP. There was only four good songs on it. Um, Go was the my favorite on there, um, but you know, Voice of America too. But they should have just made it an EP because the rest of the album sucked. So, like I said, Steve Howe in '86, uh, also Steve Hackett. So you've got the you've got the battle of the Steves. Uh, you know, Steve Hackett, of course, uh, kind of went on his own after leaving in late 1976 from Genesis. Um, Max Bacon on lead vocals. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong on this. Max Bacon got his start, I think, in a band called 707. I could be wrong on this, but that, that, that's what's coming up to me here. Um, and then Phil Spaulding and Jonathan Mover. There's the back here, like I said. This one being on Arista Records. Back then, of course, it was, it was this label. Um, but, uh, yeah, nothing nothing else uh, special. I mean, just pretty much, like I said, here you go. You know, uh, they, were, they were supposed to actually record a second album, but I don't know what happened. I want to say um, just, you know, everybody just decided to go their own ways for that one. Now, I don't talk about this too much, but I also like Christian rock. I do. There are some bands and solo artists uh, out there since the 70s that I really appreciate. 
the next one here has got an interesting story behind it, um, and I'm hoping someday, maybe next year, crossing fingers on this, I'm hoping to secure an interview with this particular gentleman and post it here. Um, but John Michael Talbot and Terry Talbot, the painter, otherwise known as the Talbot brothers in this case. Um, but but let me give you a little backstory about this, about these two, okay? Uh, John Michael Talbot and Terry Talbot both were in a band in the late 1960s called Mason Prophet. Now, I don't know if anybody out there knows who that is. Uh, they had a minor hit with two hangmen. Um, they were folk folk acoustic. They could get a little bit electric at times, but really, really good sound from them. They were on uh, several labels, including Warner Brothers and Ampex back then. I think they put out like five, six albums. Um, and then what happened is, is by the mid-70s, uh, they became born-again Christian. They actually were from my neck of the woods out in Illinois. And uh, John Michael, he would end up being a monk, okay? He uh, he actually has a monastery um, in U near Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And he still goes out and performs, though. And um, I've got a lot of his solo material from the 80s, 90s, and O's. I don't have anything of recent from this decade. But his guitar work is just so beautiful. I suggest you go to YouTube and check it out. And as far as for Terry's concerned, he also became a born-again Christian, too, um, and put out albums uh, like his brother on the Sparrow label and other stuff. But Terry reactivated Mason Prophet, I want to say in the mid-O's, and they had a EP that got cranked out. Um, like I said, he's from... I think they went and it was either Northern Illinois, Southern Wisconsin. They went and reactivated the band, and it also included Al Perkins, who at one point or another uh, was in the Flying Burrito Brothers and Manassas. So you got some good people. Here's here's the back cover, of the painter. But um, like I said, if you've never heard the Talbot Brothers, go check them out on YouTube uh, and Mason Prophet as well. I know their CDs were reissued. Uh, here's another one, speaking of, um, Reborn was the name of the album here from uh, from the late 70s, 1978. Um, um, also, this, this I kind of thought was kind of cool, okay? Um, we, in the thank you section, uh, Lowell George from Little Feet is on Easy to Slip um, a year before his death. Um, I think that was kind of neat on that bit. Russ Kunkel, of course, he also was a major session drummer in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Leland Scalar on bass, same thing. Uh, Sneaky Pete Kleinow uh, also plays steel guitar on here. He was uh, also a member of the Flying Burrito Brothers um, as well. So, I mean, we got a lot of a lot of good people on here. David Lindley, okay. Uh, let's see, dang, what band was he in? It's escaping me, but he he was in uh, another good one too. So you've got a lot of good fun stuff. I cannot wait to listen to that as well. But like I said, go check out the Talbot Brothers and Mason Prophet. All right, since I happen to be also on a brief Christian mode here, here's another man who actually was um, a legend um, before his time. He's no longer with us. He passed away in 2008. I had the pleasure of actually seeing this gentleman in 1986 at Wheaton College in uh, Wheaton, Illinois. Larry Norman's In Another Land. He uh, originally was in, briefly, uh, a 60s band on Capitol Records called Hello! Exclamation Point People, which uh, they had I Love You, which was a hit back in 1968. He left that and ended up um, pretty much going into Christian rock. Um, he was on the Verve Forecast label. He was on a bunch of other ones. And, uh, like I said, lyric sleeve. In the back here, he's sitting there by the fence. It actually says, The Trilogy Part 3 in Another Land. Death is conquered through, though you slumber. Seven is the perfect number. 
kind of neat, I think, on that one, too, on Solid Lock Records from 1976. Let's see, also, Glenn Fry, No Fun Allowed. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I found somebody, Party Town. Um, like I said, a bunch of, bunch of different pins here. This one, of course, from 82. Um, him and Henley both ended up having solo albums. Let's see who's on here. See anybody in particular? David Hawk Walensky, who, of course, was in the Shadows of Night in Chicago. Um, Jim Horn on sax. Uh, <laughs> a lot of strange people on this. I'll tell you, some of them I've never heard of before. Uh, Danny Korchmar, who of course would end up working with uh, Don Henley uh, in the late 80s, early 90s as well. Marcy Levy, uh, who would sing with uh, Eric Clapton in the 70s. Bill Champlain is on here too. Um, Roger Hawkins and David Hood, of course, from the, from the uh, Muscle Shoals rhythm section. Um, they're on a couple cuts actually on here. Um, yeah, so pretty much, pretty much a decent album for at least you know his first one. Um, of course, I, I mean he had what he had the heat is on Smuggler's Blues. I liked. He was on Miami Vice a couple times. Um, I know he he put out a solo album. I want to say last year of like some 30s and 40s standards. Eh, whatever. Holiday from America. I always liked America. Pretty cool. A actually, hold on a minute. Is this... How odd. Uh, I didn't realize this until now. This is an import. But I can't... Huh. Okay. Huh. This is odd, guys. This is uh, this is an El Salvadorian pressing. So this is from El Salvador. This version. I didn't even know that they that they were even big down there. Really cool. The label, of course, is your typical Palms label for that. But wow, I didn't know that, guys. What a surprise. I, I like having extra imports. Okay, let's see what else. Um, 10 CC, the original soundtrack with your gatefold. I always liked 10 CC; they were cool. I'm not in love, of course, being the big hit on here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Sean Cassidy. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. No, I'm not really into him. I actually got this for a friend because this is too funny. The poster. Yeah, that's why I actually got it. It was for a friend of mine up north. And the poster. Um, let's see here. Almost done, guys. Almost done. Never heard of these guys exactly, but when I saw that it was produced by Al Perkins, remember we talked about him before, Bethlehem, um, Christian rock band from late 70s again. So I'm kind of curious to hear this one too. They kind of look, they kind of look a little out of it, or they're not entirely sure what they're doing. But uh, still, that's going to be fun too. Okay, let's see. Also found a cassette tape. I don't find too many of those anymore. But Rev Up, the best of Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels on Rhino. This one's a late 80s issue release. Uh, let's see, two CDs. This one was kind of odd, i got to confess. I don't know if you have ever heard of this person, but this was a 1991 issue from Desmond Child called Discipline. Now, Desmond Child originally got started in the late 1970s with a band called Desmond Child and Rouge, but Desmond Child ended up working with bands like Heart, Kiss, I mean, he wrote a lot, you know, and co-wrote a lot of stuff here. Um, but, you know, so he, he kind of was more poppy, you know, syrupy sometimes, you know, but sometimes he could get a good hook, 
in there too. Uh, the reason why I actually snagged this album was because of who's all on this, and I can't wait to listen to this. But get this for for all the guest list. You got Joan Jett, Richie Sambora, and Tico Torres from Bon Jovi. Kane Roberts. Now, if that name don't sound familiar to you, he was Alice Cooper's guitar player. Um, for I think two albums on MCA, Constrictor and Raise Your Fist and Yell, if I remember correctly. So he he was uh, with Alice Cooper for a while. Um, Mitch Malloy. Now that may not sound familiar to you. This is he was courtesy of RCA Records at the time. Um, right around the time of what was it? The um, the late nineties? Yeah. Uh, before Van Halen 3 came out uh, and they ended up taking Gary Sharon, Mitch Malloy almost got the job of being lead singer of Van Halen. He was that close and they ended up going with Sharon instead, which I kind of think was a, no offense to Gary Sharon, but I think it was a dumb move. Uh, Vivian Campbell, of course, from Dio and White Snake and um, Shadow King. Yeah, with, uh, with Lou Graham, a foreigner. Steve Lukather from Toto. So you have a ton of session people on here. I am curious to hear this. This was on Electro Records back in 91. Uh, so that's the old CD. Now I want to tell you I got a new CD review. Um, I went, when I had a little bit of money, I went and plunked down my nine bucks and got the new Boston Faith, Hope, and Love Okay, on Frontier Records. Frontier Records has begun to sign anyone and everyone it seems like from the classic heritage rock bands okay that's your front back and everything um I don't know here's the thing I really wish I could tell you that I really love this album but I'd be a liar and I don't know I, I heard bits and pieces of this album about a month ago but the compression on it was so lousy uh, at the samples I heard then I'm like eh, I'll take a I'll take a chance when this came out because I have all the other Boston albums I do okay um, personally my favorite is you know is heaven on earth the first track on here I love that one didn't mean to fall in love is another one and um, someone uh, is my uh, my three favorites on here? Uh, it's Tom Schultz and Company. Okay, Brad Delp is on three songs on here, but two of them were previously on the 2002 album Corporate America. They're just remixed and remastered, and I'm going, uh, why? Why did we do this? Especially when after this came out in an interview that he did, I cannot remember if it was Ultimate Classic Rock Magazine or, or dot .com or whatever, he went off and opened his mouth, Tom did, and said that he's actually got more unreleased Brad Delp stuff. Well, no offense, I would have rather have wanted that instead of this 2.0, because literally, I mean, it says you gave up on Love 2.0, Someone 2.0, in other words, because of the remixing, get it? Um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you it's double thumbs up, but it's not. I, I, I think out of 11 songs, um, uh, I would say three or four of them I, I liked. Seriously. Um, just He should have just quit while he was ahead. I'm sorry. And it's not, I'm not saying that, Tom, just because you never sent back my stuff that I asked to be autographed. I sent him stuff, and I never got it back. It has nothing to do with that, I swear. But, uh, um, you know, I mean, after 11 years of working and tinkering, and, you know, I'm used to him taking forever. That's fine. You know, I love, my, my favorite is the first three albums, okay? Um, even if the second one was rushed by Epic. Third Stage was really good, too. I love Third Stage. Walk On was, eh, Corporate America. Um, I only liked about two or three songs off that one from O2. Um, I had a real good time. That one was like my favorite off of that album. I loved it. But, uh, so, I don't know. Uh, if you really are insistent on getting this, um, Best Buy, actually, their version, because I got this at Walmart, 
Best Buy actually has a uh, bonus song attached to it, so you can get 12 songs at least for it. But they were out. I went and called them. They were out at our Best Buy. We, they didn't get that many of them. So, all right, let's see. Um, I'm so out of it. I'm so sorry, guys. Listen, here's some. Here's the shout-outs here. Wax Museum with Ronnie Dark, of course, is my top one here. He is the number one most recorded show in central New York. Why? Because him and his friends that help him run that show are that damn good. Did you did you catch last week with uh, Dr. Elmo? I hope you did. That was pretty cool. Next Sunday coming up, part two of the Tommy James interview. I'm looking forward to this. I love Tommy James. Always have since I was well, early 70s when I was a kid. I liked his stuff. Uh, so we've got that going. Night Owl Lounge with Mike Adams. Best in Lounge and Exotica. Both shows Ear Candy to the Soul on Sunday nights, 6 to 9 p.m. Central Standard, followed by 9 to 10 uh, for Night Owl. Also, my buddy Doug Fields has got a Night Owl radio show. Uh, different spelling on that. You'll figure that out. Uh, that's another thing. Thrifty Music Collectors Group uh, is another one. Also, uh, two new shout outs I want to give new groups kids 45 RPM collectors you love 45s like I do go there you, and, and go join because it is fun I'm planning on doing some specialty videos maybe next week for the 45 RPM collectors only so um, if you like psycho platters I would say go like 45 RPM collectors too, and you will also get the extra videos that I will be doing. Um, also, I know this sounds a little weird. I like all my monkey Facebook fan sites, but I also have to tell you, you know, I'm in the monkeys collectible page. That's right, Kevin. I'm giving you a shout out on this. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, but that one, Psycho Jello, was another one that I listened to or, or watched both of those. Monkey Bootlegs is another cool one on YouTube. But uh, I also tripped upon the Purple Flower Gang. That's right. And uh, you know what? A nice bunch of friendly people. I, uh, I, uh, I'm looking forward to being able to converse with them as well in the future. So 45 RPM Collectors and Purple Flower Gang are my two new shout-outs. Also, I want to thank... Uh, I did. I did end up getting a couple new subscribers over the last seven to ten days, um, and I thank you for that. And like I said before, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your frenemies to like and subscribe this YouTube channel because you know what? We're getting there. It's more fun coming on the way in spring. We'll talk more about that as we get closer to that new show. Yeah, I'm going to keep coming up with new shows. That's just how the hell I am. What else is a 46-year-old man going to do in his life? Don't answer that. I know there's a lot more things, I guess. You guys take care. God bless. Rock on. And like I said, as far as for Psycho Platter, I'll see you probably at the top of in 2014. And uh, like I said, go check me out on 45 RPM Collectors coming soon. And Thrifty Readers. I'll be doing one for that one, too, probably between now and the end of the year. Take care. Rock on. God bless. And uh, you know what? Do some uh, good holiday crate digging if you have the time and the money.